Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, I'll just say what Pesha Kuka is. It's basically a simple PowerPoint template that as soon as I touch this green button, the slides will advance themselves every 20 seconds. There are 20 of them, so it lasts 6 minutes and 40 seconds. So I can't go over time. That's the good news for you. The bad news is it's extremely difficult for me to keep up with this, and you'll see beads of sweat starting to break out if I'm getting far behind. Um, OK, um, farmers are facing a big challenge. We've got, you said, 9 billion people. The latest uh, figures from the UN say the world population will exceed 10 billion people this century. And feeding that many people sustainably is going to be extremely difficult. Now, technology will be central to the systems that farmers rely on to provide that food, which we all need every day. Now, I'm going to introduce the principles underpinning the sustainable intensification of agriculture, which is here in the title. And that's a key concept that emerged from the UK government foresight report on global food security. And the theme, I guess, links with the other speakers because, as you will see, resource use efficiency is going to be the key to everything. Now, I'm about to commit myself to my six minutes, 40, 40 seconds, so wish me luck. Well, look, put simply, sustainable intensification is growing more from less. It's producing more output from the same or less land area while reducing negative impacts of agriculture and using all inputs more efficiently. We must get both higher productivity and better environmental outcomes. Now, to meet the demand from this population growth and actually from the improving diets with more meat in the developing world, we need to grow more. For 10 billion people, the challenge is to have twice as much food this century as we produced in the year 2000. Now, Syngenta is a leader in two of the key technologies, crop protection chemistry and seeds. And we spend more than a billion dollars each year on innovation, creating integrated solutions that increase yield and quality. Now, the grower, the farmer, is right at the heart of our strategy because understanding his problems and meeting them better than anyone else is how we become successful. Now, since the 1960s, farmers have been extraordinarily successful. They've doubled and trebled yields everywhere except in Africa. And this is based on their knowledge and four technologies, mechanization, fertilizers, better seeds, and crop protection chemicals. And they are the four technologies we've got to use for the new challenge. Now, resource use efficiency, we could reduce waste. Up to half of all the food grown is never eaten. That would help limit demand. But we must make better use of all key inputs, particularly land and water, and also labour, which is in increasingly short supply, even in parts of Asia and Africa. Now, this chart shows the contribution of crop protection chemicals, or pesticides, to crop yields. And put simply, the green bar is what you get from our technologies. 40 to 50% of all the food we have today would not exist without this technology. And in the context of a doubling challenge, that would be disastrous. Now, metrics are key to improve resource use efficiency. And carbon footprints of most crops look very much like this one. And it's dominated. About two-thirds of the footprint comes from the nitrogen fertilizer, from the embedded energy, and from nitrous oxide, a powerful greenhouse gas. So nitrogen efficiency is critical. What about land use? Every time we convert an acre of a hectare of land from another use to cropland, we lose 400 tonnes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, more than 1,000 tonnes if it's a, a hectare of virgin forest. We've absolutely got to stop that. And water is a critical resource. 70% of all freshwater withdrawals are used in agriculture, and it's already limiting in, in many parts of the world. Um, and with global warming, problems in these areas will get worse uh, as uh, climate change uh, takes effect. Now, how can technology help? Well, you've heard of drought-tolerant crops. Here's one. It's the first uh, water-tolerant or drought-tolerant corn hybrid launched in the USA, produced by advanced marker-assisted breeding technologies. It gives it a 10 to 15% yield boost under stress conditions. 
But when you think at a systems level, there are many levers you can pull to improve water use efficiency. Chemicals that actually, like this insecticidal seed treatment, Cruiser, activates proteins that protect against stress, giving a vigor response. Look at the root system on that treated plant. And you can imagine how that plant does better when water is limiting. Now, what about labor? Nobody wants jobs doing things like this, hand transplanting in rice. Our integrated solutions in Asia offer mechanized approaches to this, which not only make it a lot easier and cheaper for the farmers, um, but actually boost yield because of our improved agronomy in growing the seedlings. Now, you can improve water use efficiency through agronomic practices. Certainly things like drip irrigation is a very efficient way of irrigating plants. And you can add your nitrogen through there too, increasing nitrogen use efficiency. And tillage, no and min till systems, really help to avoid soil erosion and maintain soil moisture levels. Now, we can't give sophisticated solutions to every farmers, but a simple package of technology for this lady here, just crop nutrition and a simple uh, herbicide regime, really helped her create a yield of five to six tonnes of rice per hectare, three times the national average, and a big profit boost for her. We've lots of levers to pull for nitrogen use efficiency, um, and you can see the list there. But in particular, make sure that you get a balanced nutrition in the soil so that you're tackling all the nutrients that might limit yields. And also, protect your yield, because you can either grow 12 tonnes of crop or 6 tonnes of weeds and 6 tonnes of crop. Now, we think at a systems level about every crop, and we've got a projects underway to help double the productivity of sugarcane, the world's most important energy crop, over the next 10 years. But if we want better environmental outcomes, we're going to have to think at a bigger scale. We're going to have to think above the farm level at the landscape scale, because that is where you'll get the biggest benefits in terms of biodiversity protection and promotion, and be able to protect things like watercourses from diffuse pollution. And modern technology, which can image land areas, coupled with understanding about how all the different elements in a landscape inter interrelate, will be critical to getting better environmental outcomes. There's lots of interesting work going on in that area. So I think I've told you quite a bit already uh, about technology. Um, farmers, particularly in the developing world, need more than technology. They need investment in transport, in infrastructure, and particularly to be connected to functioning input markets and output markets. They need financial and technical advice through extension services. Now, in this picture, a crop input insurance scheme pioneered by the Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture is in its third year. This year, it's reaching 70,000 farmers in East Africa and it's going into Rwanda with another 10,000 farmers targeted there. And that's starting from small beginnings of about 200 farmers, all from this one shop in Nanyuki um, uh, two or three years ago. And that insurance scheme offers important financial resilience to farmers to afford inputs in climatic conditions where the rain may not come and it may wipe out their crop. So to sum up, I believe sustainable intensification is a key concept for the future of global agriculture. And it's one, actually, that can apply to all types of farming. Thinking at a systems level, that systems level approach, pulling all the levers to improve resource use efficiency is critical. And the most productive systems for meeting the challenge of 10, feeding 10 billion people will have technology at their heart. And they'll also be the most efficient in resource use terms. And I can tell you that Syngenta will be at the heart of offering those solutions to farmers and helping governments meet their challenge for food security nationally. Thanks.